Hey everybody, welcome to a new video on the Slightly Modified YouTube channel. Today we're gonna do something that is, is pleasant to the eye because if you look at these Jay-Z's, they're just kind of a crowded engine, you know? So there's just a lot of wiring on here and a lot of stuff that, uh, that comes from the factory that isn't really needed on, for example, a car like this, a drift car. So there's a lot of things you can do. I just have the sucker on like a freaking wheel dolly. There's a lot of things you can do to simplify these engines. Now, um, it just depends whether you're on a standalone ECU, like one that you can tune, or the stock ECU. If you're on the stock ECU, sometimes you gotta keep some of the stock stuff for the engine to run correctly on the stock computer. But, there are a lot of things that you can delete on this engine. Now, for example, this engine has a manual transmission behind it, and this factory harness is an automatic transmission harness, which means it pretty much has all of these extra wires that are supposed to plug into the automatic transmission. Um, these were just sitting in my engine bay, like shoved in a corner and stuff. Yeah, it's fine, you know, but we're gonna pull the harness out and we're gonna delete these. <clears throat> and there's um, a lot of other wires, like for example, over here on the factory twin turbos, um, that has a couple of plugs as well, you know, that control all of the vacuum switching valves and, and all that stuff in order to make these uh, factory twin turbos operate correctly. I do not have those anymore. so. When we pull this harness out, we're, we're gonna go through it and delete all this stuff. Now, I'm gonna show you how to pull a harness out and delete it all, and it just cleans it up. Now, when you have extra money, not like me, I like to use things that are there. I don't prefer a factory harness, but I will work with it only because I don't have a thousand extra dollars to spend on an aftermarket harness. Now, maybe one day in the future we will, but these stock harnesses are perfectly fine, and. There's a lot of wires you can get rid of and shit, you can make them look like an aftermarket harness if you like relume it and stuff. But anyways, I'm getting too deep into that. Another thing on these engines that you can delete is, now this is more for like the race car specific, but you could do this on a daily driven vehicle as well. There is this water pipe. It comes out of the back of the water pump right there. This water pipe goes right here. You see where this blue hose is? It exits right here and it goes into the back of the head. That's for your heater core, entrance and exit. So, since I'm not running a heater core, I just bypassed it by looping it. Um, you should not plug these, because if you plug these, the coolant is not gonna have an easy way of getting out of the back of the head, and that's how you pretty much you know, overheat the last two cylinders on the engine. So, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna pull this off, and this whole pipe wraps around the back of the engine and supplies a few more things as well. As you see, there's another coolant line going all the way over to the throttle body. Now, I don't know the fuck that's for. I'm in California. I don't fucking need it. So we're going to uh, we're going to get rid of that too. And there's more coolant lines that go to this um, factory oil cooler. So what coolant does is it runs through this thing, and oil runs through this thing. Obviously, they don't touch each other, but. Um, the coolant is used to cool the oil. Now, on you know aftermarket like racing style vehicles, uh, people usually put aftermarket oil coolers because you don't want to heat up the coolant to barely even cool down the oil. It just it makes your engine overheat faster. So we're gonna get rid of that too. That being said, this whole pipe that wraps around the back of the engine is no longer needed. So my good friend Efren at Suspicious Garage actually simplifies these and deletes a lot of stuff, and he puts an AN fitting on it. So Basically what they do is they cut it pretty much right here and it gets rid of all this stuff and then he welds a dash 10 AN line. That way you could do uh, the dash 10 AN right there. And then he also has a fitting that you could put in here that goes through dash 10 as well. That way you can run AN line from here to here. And that's all you need. You don't need any of this along the back of the engine. So I'm gonna pull this off and I'm gonna bring it to him. So it's, it's probably gonna take him out a week or so to do that. And then um, over here, also, once all of these are deleted, it goes back into the block or comes out of the block on the other side. So this side goes to the, the water pipe and this side goes to the water pipe too. But on the other side, it goes into the block and on the other side of this, it goes into the block. So what he does as well is he taps those. So I think it's like, I don't know, 3 ace MPT or something like that. And then we put plugs in them. It basically simplifies the routing of the coolant and allows you know everything to work properly. And don't 
really put any unnecessary heat into the coolant so you can save it all for revving the shit out of this engine. So we're gonna start with uh, simplifying the harness. I'm gonna pull that water pipe out and bring it to him. But I just wanted to make it an intro to this video. That way I could pull that water pipe off. And also while the engine's out, we're gonna give it some love too. We're gonna polish the valve covers a little bit better. We're gonna, this car sits outside. So everything's starting to look all freaking nasty. So we're gonna give it some love. We're gonna, oh, I only polished one valve cover too. So we're gonna polish the other one. Um, I'm gonna pull the turbo off. We're gonna paint the manifold. I never painted it. So it's all freaking rusty. Stuff like that. We're gonna clean up this engine. This video is more about simplifying this Jay-Z. Now, um, if you guys want like pretty much a uh, step-by-step picture tutorial, Suspicious Garage has the whole Jay-Z simplifying um, tutorial online. It's just all pictures and writing. I'm basically doing what he did and just putting it into a video. So shout out to Efren for that. But holy shit, that was a lot of talking. I'm gonna start getting to work on this engine and we're gonna get the harness off and the water pipe off. Okay guys, we're gonna start by pulling the harness off of the engine. But before we do that, we're gonna mark all of the plugs that we wanna get rid of with tape. That way when we pull it out, we'll know what we need to get rid of. So it should take us on about 10 minutes to take out the harness and then uh, we'll open it up and start working on it. Okay guys, I just about got the whole harness unbolted and unplugged and I labeled everything only because I didn't want to confuse myself while I was on the bench. So before I pull it off, I want to go over a basic overview of how this harness is ran. So the main part of the harness runs in this plastic channel below the intake manifold and then it just branches off from there. So I'll just, uh, I'll explain everything real briefly. So coming right here, this is what goes to your ECU. So I have it running in the car. Most of these 2JZ GTEs um, are located in the engine bay. And then right here, your diagnostic port and your igniter plug. And then it also goes back here. It goes up through your intake manifold. This is what does all of your injectors, your cam sensor, um, the few of these, uh, the map port, a few of these things bolted on here, the acceleration position sensor. Most of this goes in the front, goes to the throttle body. And then that's it for that. And then coming back here, this is your whole automatic transmission harness, which is going to be deleted. Um, and then that's pretty much it for the back side of the motor. It comes up through the front and then it goes across to the other side. Now, right here, it does only the first injector. It does the, the VVTI solenoid. It does the TPS, um, the throttle body power for the electronic throttle body goes across the engine and then it does uh, your water temp sensor, your alternator, um, your crank position sensor. And then I think there's a VSV for the twin turbo. I marked it, so that's gonna get deleted. And then right here, it goes on the top of the engine. We have the plugs for the coil packs. I also ran my O2 sensor plug through here to get it to the back, so it looks a little bit cleaner. And then coming out of the back of here, we got these, I believe they go to the twin turbos. They're gonna get deleted. There's also a piece of loom that comes down off of this channel and goes down here. Um, it, there's these, these are grounds, they bolt to the intake manifold, one right here and one right here. There is um, a rear knock sensor and then of course the starter plug. Then we right here we have the oil pressure sensor, the oil level sensor. Um, this is for the AC compressor. And then I think, I don't know if this was the idle up for the power steering, I'm not sure. It's gonna get deleted. Um, and then that's just about it. Kind of a lot of talking, but while I'm out of here, since I took that coolant pipe off, I'm gonna delete this metal hose that runs through the intake that goes all the way to the throttle body. So as you guys can see, I took the throttle body off. There's two coolant pipes that go in and out of the throttle body. As you can see, this one goes into the side of the head. And then this one goes, um, the return to the water pump. We're gonna get rid of these. Um, and then these for the water pump, that one, and then the one that goes to the block. We're gonna get rid of this whole Johnny right here. Yeah, we're gonna do a lot to simplify this motor. We're also gonna clean it up because it's been sitting outside for a while. Okay, so before I tear apart this harness, 
We're just gonna go over it real quick. I got my workbench pretty cleaned up because I like to keep things organized when I do stuff like this. So here's the harness laid out on the table. Looks kind of big, looks kind of bulky. Um, these plastics we're probably gonna keep just to keep the simplicity of it. We're gonna pretty much de-loom the whole harness just to make it easier for ourselves. Then we're going to start um, de-looming the plugs that we don't need and take them as far as we possibly can to these plugs over here and we can just get rid of them. So it's gonna take some time. Um, it's just something that you have to do if you don't want to spend uh, between $900 and $1,500 on a harness. So I also got all this stuff over here. This is braided loom. I ordered some more because this stuff, it goes quick when you start doing harness stuff like this. This is going to be an eighth inch uh, sleeve. So you have to de-pin it, slide this over. And then we have quarter inch split loom. So the cool thing about this is you can split it up and put it over without um, depinning anything, which is cool. And then we have one inch, this is big boy stuff. So I ordered some more of this. Um, I also ordered uh, three eighths, quarter inch, and a bunch of heat shrink so we can make this thing look real nice. So I'm gonna turn on the time lapse. I'm gonna start tearing this apart. It's gonna take me, I don't know, a couple hours to tear it apart and start um, delooming the stuff that I don't need. But we're gonna get to it. Because this car needs to be running and driving in like a week. No, I would say a week and a half, two weeks, max, absolute max, um, because we're gonna take a drifting. So we need, to, we need to finish this car and I've been lagging big time. So we gotta get this done. Okay, while I got this harness torn apart, um, this is where I'm starting to delete wires. So I've already deleted a few. Just let me show you uh, an example of how to delete something. For example, I am not running the factory twin turbos anymore. So there's a lot of like uh, vacuum switching valves and actuators and stuff like that, that the ECU controls that you don't need anymore. So here's a plug, for example, this one is pretty much right next to like the alternator plug and the crank position plug. There's two of them. One of them I already deleted, it's down there. And here's the other one right here. So plugs like these are gonna consist of two wires, a power wire and like a signal wire, right? So as you see, the power wire right here, in this case, it's black and red. And if you trace the wire, like basically if you just tug on it throughout the harness, it goes all the way over here, all over here. And it goes into this, uh, what they call like squid connectors. So you see this just comes out and does like 10 different things. So all you have to do is already did it on the other one. You trace it, you cut it, and then later on you could pull the tape off and, and actually get it out of there and like cut it out of there like professionally. Now that only gets rid of one wire. The other wire, as you can see, I already have it pretty much just hanging here. It routed all the way through the harness, all the way around to the ECU plug. So in this case, this went on the B2 plug, as you see, I have these um, pinouts right here. Go to wilbo666.com and look up your JZS 161 harness. This is a 2JZ GTE harness. Um, if your engine's different, obviously, this is still gonna kind of apply, but the pins and all the, the pinouts are not gonna be the same. You have to look for the pinout for your typical harness. Now, if you guys wanna see how I did a 1J, I also have a video on how I simplified a 1J harness as well. But getting back to this, this is the B2 plug. If you're looking at it like this, you see the wire I cut? That's the wire to that um, VSV plug. So in this case, it's gonna be pin three, right? If you're looking at it like the diagram, pin three, and it says VSV2. So you can get into it, and then you can go all the way over here and, and, and find out what it does. All I know, it's a vacuum switching valve. It's for the twin turbos. We don't need it. So I cut it, fished it all the way through, and here we are. So all I gotta do now is fish this power wire out. It goes all the way around to this squid connector, cut that out, and we pull it out of the harness. There you go. And then later on, everything that you cut, you gotta go back and clean it up. So as you see, I got wires everywhere. It's because um, once I'm done, I'm gonna clean it all up. I'll go into this connector, I'll open this up, and I will depin it with like a paperclip or something. And then you do that for pretty much everything. Now, here is the automatic transmission harness. This one's pretty simple because you already know like wherever it goes to the transmission, all these wires, pretty much most of those wires connect to this automatic transition plug. So what I do in the beginning, because I know that not everything on this plug is for the automatic transmission. There's a few things that are for other things 
that I knew I already wanted to get rid of as well. So if you wanted to confirm that, you go right here to this B3 plug and you find out what you want to keep. You know, you have your speed sensor in here. I think I did keep my reverse wires that came out of there. So what I did was I cut them out, I left them there, and then I fished the rest of this out. So as you can see, I got my two reverse wires right here. Um, one of them is going to be a, a power, and then the other one's going to be the return line that uh, comes out of your transmission reverse switch and goes all the way back through your harness, all the way over here, and then this will connect to your car and then power the reverse lights when you put your transmission in reverse. So I wanted to keep those. I'm not going to use them right away, but two wires we'll just leave in there. Um, as for this uh, diagnostic plug, I thought about keeping it. I'm not going to use it anytime soon. We're going to get it out of here. This harness is way too thick. I need to thin this puppy up so that way I can put some nice braided loom on here. So I'm going to keep working. Um, this is actually a really long process, not very stressful, as long as you keep track of what you're doing. For example, you see different things on the harness that come out of different points, right? You don't want to get that all messed up. You see these, everything has its own like a uh, path that it wires off on. So if you, if you take all this tape off, it will help to put a zip tie right here, make it pretty tight. That way, you know, when you tape it back up, this plug needs to be right here instead of back here. So that way you won't mess up. But before you do any of that, it's always best to kind of like make everything kind of just rough, you know, put a bunch of zip ties on it, throw it on your engine, make sure all the plugs plug in and then adjust some of your zip ties or whatever, slide them, and then that's how you tape it when you're done and you cut the zip ties off. So just a quick uh, ramble about how that's pretty much done. Um, yeah, doing this will save you $1,000 on a wiring specialties harness. So, um, and I'm not gonna say it's just as good, you know, cause it's old and beat up and the plugs are all cracked. But uh, you know, if you order new plugs, 100 bucks, if you order the wiring loom, I don't know, 20 bucks. So 120 bucks you put into this OEM harness to make it look and work like an aftermarket harness. Enough of that, time to get back to work. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna make this quick just because this is just, it's a really tedious process. If you're about it, do it. If not, hey. Just buy one. <laughs> so after about three hours, I got everything I wanted deleted. Now, just let me go over a few things that um, that I just wrote down just because I don't know if it might be helpful for you in your build. This is pretty much what I deleted. A lot of these are uh, VSVs and there's a few things that have to do with AC, a few things that have to do with a couple sensors I got rid of. So let's just go over these real quick. So this is B1, B2, B3, right? So B1 and B2 are the engine plugs. B3 is the automatic transmission plug. So let's just start with B3. I got rid of the whole thing, right? I cut it all off. Now, what this plug consists of, I'll go over right now. B3 consists of um, everything you need for your automatic transmission, you know, the solenoids, the, the trans temp and all that stuff. Um, the speed sensor, which is pin five and 11. The fuel pressure VSV, I got rid of that. That was pin 16. Exhaust bypass VSV is pin 12. Now, um, on B2, I got rid of um, pins 3 and 8, which is exhaust gas, VSV, and the oil pressure sensor. I believe it's just a dummy sensor for your dash. If you lose oil pressure, um, your dash light comes on, or if you have low oil pressure, your dash comes on. I just got rid of that because my dash don't work anyways. Um, and as for plug B1, I got rid of the intake bypass valve, the oil level sensor, the wastegate vacuum switching valve, and the air conditioning lock. So that has to do with the AC. So that's pretty much 90% of the stuff I got rid of. I'll show you the other 5%. So that ends up leaving me with all these wires. Here is a body harness plug. Pretty much everything is gone now except for this one wire. So I believe that is the one we were gonna use for reverse. Here's the other, the main body harness plug for the starter and the fuel and the cool packs. Um, I only got rid of one wire out of that. A um, couple wires I cut out of this little uh, power harness, cut out of that, just, you know, when you follow things, it just, some ended up there. And then here are the main plugs. You see, I got a couple wires on each, two wires on B2 and four wires on B1. So I'm going to depin all those. I'm also going to depin all of these. This 
mainly, mainly goes to the um, the diagnostic port. So I cut that out because that shit don't work anyways. So I cut that out. Um, I got to depin all those. A few uh, a few grounds. This orange is all like your sensor grounds and important grounds. So there's a few grounds I got to get rid of out of there. Maybe three or four of them. And that's pretty much just about it. Now let's go over what I actually deleted. This is everything I deleted from the harness. I'll just go over the plugs. Um, this is this was the oil level sensor. This is on the um, the upper oil pan. I got rid of that. The oil pressure sensor. This plugs into where your uh, your oil filter goes. Got rid of that. This is the AC plug. Not running AC. Got rid of that. Um, this is a VSV plug. Don't know which one. This is the whole auto trans harness right here. Got rid of this whole damn thing. I believe this is the speed sensor. It's either this one or that one. Um, here's the diagnostic port that consists of like eight wires. Got rid of that. Um, more VSVs. Uh, more VSVs. More VSVs. And then this one is the. Um, this goes to the sensor on your power steering line. This is when you turn. This is what idles up your car. Also got rid of that. Don't really care. So I don't know. It's not like 30. 30 plus wires I got rid of. So the harness is a lot skinnier now. Um, I also rerouted this igniter plug inside of the car with the ECU. That was just a matter of just moving it. Um, everything is pretty much ready to be re loomed now. I, I got most of the loom off. You know, the loom I left on is stuff that I need to remember where things go. So when I re loom that, I'll make sure that um, all of these lengths are the same and stuff like that. So now this is the part where I get into um, relooming it, which is it's not as hard as people may think. Um, the only thing you have to do to make it clean is you have to depin stuff so you can slide the loom on there. They have the split loom, the stuff that you just put over it because it's split. Um, it doesn't look as clean; it's a little bulkier. So on a lot of the two wire plugs, I'm going to depin them. Then I'm going to put on the the nice braided loom. So. That stuff's coming in the mail. It should be here tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll start up the time lapse and uh, we'll wrap this harness up and we will complete it. it. Looks a lot better, a lot skinnier, and I think it's gonna fit on the engine a lot better. It was a pain in the ass to get off. So with all that talking, we are just about on the home stretch uh, with the harness here. Now up next, my friend Efren from Suspicious Garage is going to uh, is going to help me with all of my my coolant stuff. So he offers a service where he uh, sells you all these parts so you could delete all of your coolant pipes. So I already talked about that. Um, I'm going to end up deleting this. So I have to take all this off. I'm going to bring the engine to him because he's nice enough and is willing to tap all of my ports on the block for me so I can plug them. Um, this right here, this is the, the fuel damper. This is going. We're going to get rid of this. And then we're going to put the fuel line straight on the back of the fuel rail. So just stuff to clean up the engine and simplify it. You know, it's, it's just really busy and we don't need all that stuff. So we got a lot of work to do, but I know this video might end up being kind of long, but I just want to explain everything because I'm titling this video, how to simplify your 2JZ, because I want to let you know that there's a lot of things that come on these cars that you do not need. I mean, for smog purposes, of course, you're maybe gonna have to keep a lot of this stuff. But uh, me, I have a race car. I don't need all this stuff. I want the engine bay to look A1. So that's what we're doing. And we're gonna get rid of a lot of weight and a lot of clutter. So we're gonna keep trucking. All right, just took the engine to Suspicious Garage. And he did it all up for me. You know, I'm, I'm really big on the whole simplifying thing in this video. So I wanted to show you what he did for me. So um, a couple quick things. Let me see. He tapped this port right here. This was the coolant port for the throttle body. He tapped that. I don't know what size. Sorry, I think maybe a quarter. I don't want to take any guesses. He put a plug in there. And then he tapped this. I think I do know this size. This comes um, in the total block. I think it's 3 ace BSBT, BSPT or whatever you call it. I think he tapped it to an MPT, um, 3 ace MPT. And then he put a plug in there for me. 
And this right here, we got rid of this big Johnny. So what this does is the, the coolant also flows through here and it acts as like a factory type of oil cooler. It doesn't really work that well, but uh, I just took that out. And um, he has a kit, not a kit. I guess it's called the oil, um, oil cooler delete stud. And all you do is take that off. You throw that sucker right into the block and then you just slap a filter right on the side of the block. Now, it's not the best thing to do, because um, especially if you track your car, you know, these things can start running, um, the oil can get pretty warm. So you should run an oil cooler, but the cool thing about this delete stud is you can put your oil cooler right on, right on this. You're gonna need this regardless if you have an oil cooler. So um, I have that, so whenever I wanna get an oil cooler, I can. And then, what else did you do? Tap those, oh yeah, this. So back here comes with a Preston fitting and what he does is he pulls it out and he taps that. I don't know what size, half inch or three eighths. I, I don't know what size, I, I'm not gonna take any guesses. And then he puts a dash 10 on it, a little bit of heat sleeving for the exhaust. And then remember when I showed you earlier that that thing wrapped all the way around the back of the head? He cuts that off and they weld a dash 10 fitting on there. So you need this because you need the coolant to exit, whoa cool it you need the coolant to exit the back of the head so that way you can bypass your heater core because this goes into your heater core and then that's the heater core exit down there goes back to the water pump so what you do to bypass that is just dash 10 dash 10 no leaks you won't have to worry about it because it's super close to the firewall it starts leaking you fucked you got to pull your engine so uh yeah so we did that too so shout out to him for that big 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 um simplify here you can get rid of all of that so the side of this engine is empty now um, I did take off the fuel pump dampener right here. What that does is it takes the fuel inlet right here, goes through, it dampens it, smooths it out or whatever it does, and then that wraps around and goes to the back of the fuel rail. Now what you could do is, this is a dash six fitting. I don't know what the other size is, sorry. You could put that on there and then you could run a 90 and then you can run an AN fitting all the way to your fuel pump. Now the engine's pretty much ready to go back in. I'm working um, on the harness. This was the VSV for the for the OEM regulator, we don't need that. We're not using it anymore. So we just took the source straight off of the manifold and then this just goes to the regulator. So another big simplify on that. Once we're done with the harness, we'll slap the harness back in and the motor will be ready to drop back in the car. All right, and that's pretty much the finished product. It ain't perfect, but I deleted everything on here that was unnecessary. So I like to be pretty organized when I do stuff like this. So that's why it takes a little bit longer than others, but yeah. Everything looks a lot slimmer. For example, this is what goes inside the intake manifold and connects all the injectors and stuff and the, all that stuff to the throttle body. And then this actually goes under the car. This is for the reverse lights. This, I left the, the old insulation on here because this goes on the side of the block. It gets really hot down there. This is what goes inside of the car. These go, where do these go? These go to the MAF, and then um, throttle body, throttle body, and then this is for the VVTi. These over here, they go across the top of the engine. Now we got a water temp, alternator, crank position sensor, and then these I left a lot of insulation on because these go into the valve cover for the coil packs. And this one is my O2 sensor, so this goes through there, snakes out the back of the engine. That's pretty much everything that you really need. Pretty much all that stuff I took off of the harness, and that's pretty much it. So it's time to slap the harness back on the engine. It may not look like a lot, but look how clean that looks. All of the injector wires coming out of the backs, looking good. The reason why I kept that little plastic thing is because it just chills under here. It's easier to have. And then there's a few things coming out of here. Right, TPS. Got rid of uh, the oil level, oil pressure. This filter's looking good with the delete. Comes up here, goes around here. This is looking snazzy as well. Alternator plug, crank position sensor, water temp sensor. Beautiful, everything looking beautiful. I cleaned up these uh, coolant lines because I run coolant to this turbo clean those up put a heat sleeving on it and the oil drain yeah man she's looking good
everything's looking good. One of the big things for me was there was a coolant pipe running in the intake. It was this one right here. And we were able to take that out because we got rid of the coolant to the throttle body. We're also able to take this out. This is the uh, the fuel damper, dampener or however, whatever. So we got rid of that, that cleans up some stuff. What we did is we put an AN6 right in the back of the rail. So we're gonna do a 90 down and we're gonna do AN fuel line. So I got the lines ran, just, you know, it's a little bit dark. But right now I am gonna throw this engine in the car. Hopefully I could do it by myself, I think I can. Um, yeah, this engine's freaking beautiful, cleaned up beautiful, way less crowded. Now, most importantly, it's going to be way easier to work on in the car. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I wanted to show you how to simplify a Jay-Z, you know, regarding the, the wiring and all the unnecessary coolant stuff that goes through there. I want to thank you guys for watching this video, and please like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you like what I did, say Andrew the man. If you don't, say Andrew you suck. Either or, let me know. If you guys want to hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions, my Instagram is is300garza. So, anyways, I'm out. Thanks for watching.